before I re begin this review. Just wanted to say happy 50th to Chris Jericho. It was a good show on Saturday. And hope you have a good day. Well, a good night, I guess. Anyways, hope you get to celebrate with a little bit of the bubbly. It'll be a lot of fun, and let's get on with this review. Drink it in, man! Hey, look who's here. Hey, me, Matt. So, as I predicted, this was a good show, Full Gear was awesome, and I'm, I'm sure Killer Carl will agree with me on that. I mean, yeah, there is nothing more I could have asked for. And it's funny because even though you don't get pay-per-view or whatever, watch it on a big screen or whatever you will, you can still watch it on a computer, you have tons of things to choose from, but obviously, to look back at what happened on Saturday, I watch it on the YouTube highlights, and yeah, that was pretty fucking amazing, very good, I really enjoyed it. So we have... The pre-show match, which obviously wasn't what I thought it was, but of course, the NWA Championship was on the line, women's NWA as it were. Serena D taking on Allison K, aka Serena. And this was a good match, and of course, I think that because NWA has closed its doors, a lot of those wrestlers are coming back to various places, like James Storm is back on Impact. Allison K just made her debut, if you will, on Dynamite or AEW. So, this was a good match. And obviously, Serena D had picked up the victory and is still the champion. Now, you have at the end of the match. Thunder Rosa coming out and basically they go nose to nose and yeah, possibly gonna be a rematch down the road, so I can't wait for that. We have Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page to determine who's gonna win to face the winner of the main event for the AEW Championship. This match was really good. I think these two guys I mean, they obviously know each other very well. They took action to the outside. They really beat the shit out of each other. I mean, it was a close call. But Kenny Omega picked up the win. What was cool was having Don Callis, a fellow Manitoban, what well, Winnipeg, and commentary. So, it's very cool to see that. So, I mean, it was the veteran in Kenny Omega. Now I think that Hangman Page could have won but I mean Kenny like we said in our prediction video hadn't really had a major title so it would be pretty cool to see if he does get the AEW Championship in the future. Now the match I thought was going to be on a pre-show obviously it wasn't. You have Orange Cassidy versus the Dark Orders, John Silver. This match was pretty cool. In the beginning, you have them face to face, and the Orange Cassidy was gonna 
put his hands slowly in his pocket to touch on it. And so he did that. Yeah, this was pretty cool, you know. Obviously, Orange Cassidy is unique. John Silver, that was also pretty impressive. Orange Cassidy ended up getting the win. So, yeah, there's going to be some good matches in the future for him as well. Uh, Best Friends came out after the match to celebrate. So I can't wait to see what happens in the future for him. As far as John Silver goes, yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen with him as well, but we'll see. We've got the AEW TNT Championship match. You've got Cody Rhodes taking on Darby Allen. Now Cody came out with, of course, Brandy and Dustin and honestly can't remember who else came out with him. And then of course, you know, Darby Allen. Now this match was awesome. I mean, you fucking had Darby do a Tope Suicida to the back of Cody. Cody was on the apron, you know. With the coffin drop, which didn't get him the win, you have Cody who did a, I guess they call it an an avalanche, you know, super crossroads, but, you know, nonetheless that happened. I thought that was pretty fucking cool. This match was a close call, but it ended up a chain pin thing. Which, surprisingly, Darby Allen picked up the win and is now the TNT champion. Now, obviously thinking, because I am that kind of person, I thought Cody was going to turn a heel on Darby, but he picked up the belt and on one knee handed him the TNT title. Now, we all know what happened when Shinsuke Nakamura handed AJ Styles, the WWE title at WrestleMania 34. Needless to say that AJ Styles was... We're a fucking cup! Yeah. So anyway... You have the... Women's Championship. AEW. Hiro Kushida. Versus Nyla Rose with Vicky Guerrero. Now they worked on the knee of Sheeta and Nyla basically tortured that knee with the help of Vicky Guerrero when they went on the outside. And then, yeah, Akero fought back and yeah, somehow picked up the win and is still your AEW Women's Champion. You have the Young Bucks versus FTR. Now, this match was very cool. This is probably the match of the night for the fact that FTR basically used some old school wrestling moves. They did a heart attack, they did a top rope bulldog. I can't remember the name of that one. That was a top rope bulldog. They really pulled out all the stops. Now, obviously, Matt Jackson's foot was still fucked up, so he sucked up the pain, and he had Matt Jackson do a 450 splash. Cash Wheeler did a frog splash to no avail, but somehow the Young Bucks are the new tag team champions, and of course that would happen. Why? Because if the Young Bucks lost, they wouldn't have another opportunity at the tag team titles. You know, I understand pride, but honestly, if I watch Dynamite on Wednesday, I better not fucking see the Young Bucks surrender to take titles because of Matt's fuck. Like, seriously, that was fucking bullshit. I really like the Young Bucks, but I like the FTR. FTR could have had the Take Team Championships for a little bit longer, but I don't we have to have the Young Bucks go over. Why? Because that pride got in the way. There's no other two ways about it. He is injured. And, you know, FTR, like I said, could have 
still had the titles for a little bit longer. But just like a WWE, they get fucked over. And, and, and just, I just don't get it. So we'll see what happens on Dynamite, I guess. So you have the Elite Deletion match at the Hardy Compound. Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. And oh my god. This. I. Mm. <laughs> so. Yeah. It was awesome. Okay. You have Matt Hardy as Broken Matt. As regular Matt, I guess. You had Hurricane Helms. Shane Helms in the match. You know. Well, he actually was dragged out by this hooded guy. He was at the vice modulated thingy. So he takes off his equipment and it's Gang Growl who aligned himself with Sammy Guevara. Okay, cool. And they fought out in the woods. They fought in the ring on the outside, which I thought was cool. Matt has this projector fireworks thing, which I really want now. So there's that. They go into this party shed. Of course, it's been used a lot too. They have the ring there as well. You have a coffin for some reason. The tables are set up on the outside. You got Sammy Guevara going on the ladder that he placed in the ring. Goes on top. You know, right up to the ceiling, jumps off and misses. You know, he chokes up Matt in the beginning of that, first of all. But yeah, Sammy basically fucked himself over. He's bleeding, but nonetheless, Matt already wins the match, says it's over. My private party was in the truck and came out during the match and yeah so after the match all three of the guys throw Sammy in a trash can a trash bag whatever the fuck and they take him outside they put him in a truck where senior Benjamin is driving and then takes him off now I know I scrambled a little bit but Matt Hardy won the match. I figured that would happen. So let's move on. Better than All Out. So you have MJF versus Chris Jericho. And I honestly thought that Kyle's predictions were not only awesome, but they were going to happen. But that didn't happen. They took each other to the limit. You know, both guys were amazing in this match. Chris Jericho for, at the time, almost 50. Really still knows his shit. Really does a lot of the luchador moves that he used to do when he was Lionheart in a, early on in his WWE career. So that's pretty cool, you know. MJF obviously tried to cheat when Wardlow came out and handed him the ring. But of course, you have Jericho being thrown the bat, Floyd, by Jake Hagar. MJF f pretends to faint. And Aubrey and Jericho are having words. MJF hits the roll up and won the match and is now the new member of the inner circle so i'm not sure if there's well there's gonna be a turn eventually there has to i mean everyone likes jericho everyone sings along with jericho's music he seems to enjoy that so i'm not sure what's gonna happen but i hope it's soon this match holy fucking shit <laughs> And I talked about this and I hyped this up. Very cool. I yeah, quit match John Moxley versus Eddie Kingston. Now it started off slow, slapping the, each other in the face 
very, you know, not how I expected it, but it picked up. They wrestled on the outside, they did a lot of cool holds. Then eventually you had chairs, John brings out the barbed wire bat and strikes Eddie with it a few times actually. There's thumbtacks, John Knox gets thrown through that. There's fucking thumbtacks on his head. And then Eddie Kingston takes the barbed wire off the bat and puts it on his right fist and just waylays the shit out of John Moxley. So this match was pretty cool. Obviously, you know, there was a Kamara lock as well, so that was cool. But John basically puts him in a bulldog choke with the barbed wire. Like they, Eddie tried it too. But not with the barbed wire, that was John. And John made Eddie Kingston say I quit and is still your AEW champion. That was fucking awesome. So, this was a good show. I really enjoyed it. And it wasn't as sloppy as AEW All Out. But this was a good show. I can't wait to see what's next. I mean, Revolution is next year. Which I... Okay. So, yes, this is a good pay-per-view. This is a good way to end off the year. So, I can't wait to see what's next. Anyways, talk to you later. Bye.